you guys, bit of a different video for you this week. Not something that I would usually do because I'm going to talk about the lesser points of the Y62 Patrol and 200 Land Cruiser. Now, um, this was inspired by uh, the 200 versus 62 battle page on Facebook. If you haven't checked it out, uh, make sure you've got thick skin, thick skin if you do go on there because uh, uh, if you say anything on there, you're going to get ripped to shreds. That's the kind of the idea about it. If you want to talk nicely about your car, well, there's other places for it. But there was a good uh, comment put on there by Paul Hurley, I believe it was, and he was talking about, you know, if you're looking at these cars, what are the bad points? What are the things which, uh, you know, everyone boasts about how amazing the car is, but what are the bad things about each of these vehicles? Um, I'm way too biased to talk about the uh, Land Cruiser. I haven't owned one. I'm not going to pretend I do own one. So we're doing a bit of a collaboration this time with Stephen from Australian 4x4 Adventure. He's got a, his own YouTube channel, check it out, I'll put a little post up in the corner there, um, it's pretty cool. So uh, he's a 200 owner, he's pimped it up, been off road, knows the tracks, knows the vehicle. So he's going to talk about the Land Cruiser and I'll talk about the Patrol. Let's get into it, eh? Hey going guys, it's Steve here from uh, Australian 4x4 Adventures. Um, as Dave was saying, we're doing a bit of a collaboration on the bad points of our cars. Bit of a strange one, but hey, something different, so why not give it a go. Alright, um, Dave asked me to make a bit of a list on things that... The bad points of the car. I have a page full. Fuel economy. These things are pretty bad. <laughs> um, I keep a pretty accurate record of all the fuel that I use. Um, as it is, it's just on three and a half ton. So that's rear bar, front bar, roof racks, drawers, fridge, everything inside. So it's fairly heavy overall, fairly well decked out. Um, around town, anywhere from 14 to 16s. Sort of, I don't drive it overly nicely, but I don't thrash it either. It's just sort of driving to work, drive to a job, just sort of the usual stuff. Um, so that's sort of 14 to 16 is average. So 15 sort of where it's at most of the times. Um, probably about the only advantage to a diesel over a petrol, the fuel doesn't jump up quite as much um, when you put some weight behind these things as opposed to a petrol. But they're still not as good as what a lot of 200 owners would like to make you think, getting eights and nines and this and that. Mine certainly doesn't. They might be out there, but sure as hell not this thing. All right, it seems like every time you mention the word patrol or 62, someone has to ask about fuel economy. Well, big truck, I reckon they're all right, so I bought it. I don't really care that much about the economy, but it can suck juice, like 15 to, I don't know, whatever liters around town. And, uh, um, you know, when you're towing, one of my worst days probably been like 30 liters per 100 towing, you know, 2.8 ton. So, eh, economy ain't great, get over it. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with this car. I love it, but damn, it's freaking annoying that you can spend that much money on a car and still have so many things that could go wrong and do go wrong in a lot of cases for for a lot of owners out there uh, there has been reports of like alloy rims cracking uh, I've punished mine hasn't happened to me but yeah there's a few posts on on Facebook about cracked rims probably the biggest bugbear and the biggest issues arise from the motor so uh, Catch cans are needed. Being a diesel, obviously you can get blow by, you can start to um, damage the intercooler from all the oil that comes through. These things tend to chew through a fair bit of oil. Um, it's hit and miss on the earlier models. Some of them you can, um, they'll chew through five litres of oil in 5,000 K. It's not really acceptable for a, for a $120,000 car. The paint is pretty thin. Like, when you have a look at my car, I don't know if you can see the scratches in them. Fair enough, this has had a, bit of punishment but yeah the paint uh, is uh, it could be better put it that way fuel being a diesel fairly susceptible to bad fuel um, you get some bad fuel on there you can do injectors injectors are close to a thousand dollars a pop sort of installed um, so have being eight of them eight thousand dollars for a car you've already spent 120 on not good My enough bus add. is about three years old now. Oh, getting close to four actually, um, and it's starting to throw codes. Like engine light comes on, and when I chase it up, it looks like probably. 
probably the cats are blocked or the sensors before or after the cats are stuffed. One of the two. Uh, could probably chase this down, but the answer is headers. Well, my answer headers uh, and do the whole exhaust system, I reckon. Um, problem solved and chip it at the same time. You don't even have to get bad fuel to make an injector go. Um, there's reports of cars about 150,000 K where just injectors just need doing straight away. The batteries all... in these, especially like if you bought the 13 models, which probably sat around for a year or two before that actually got registered, um, they tend to go flat. The smart alternator is rubbish. Do yourself a favour, do the red wire snip or disconnect the um, uh, the shunt off the battery, it'll give your battery years more life and I haven't seen any problem with fuel economy. The turbos, they've got a bad habit of dusting themselves, which is generally due to the, the air intake, so the, the, the air box. Um, doesn't seal properly, you get some dust in there, um, sucks it straight through into the turbo, starts chewing out bearings, everything else, and they're a couple grand per turbo. Generally it's the passenger side turbo that fails first, the driver's side one isn't doesn't necessarily fail, but it's best practice to replace both at once if you're going to replace one at all. Box, easy fix. Put a snorkel on, make sure it's sealed up properly. It's not too bad. Um, if you're going to do any sort of full driving, you're going to need a snorkel the anyway. Bloody parking sensors go off all the time. It drives me nuts. You can fix it. You just press and hold the button down on Warm STL for 10 seconds, and it turns off. But when you're going over mobile moguls, even when you stop at the lights and uh, a car perpendicular comes past uh, it sends the sensors off how stupid is that and I've got them on the um, lowest sensitivity. The alternator. The alternator is actually pretty good in these things they're just the, the, the standard uh, temperature variant alternator um, the problem is the positioning of it they're, they're right down down low in the motor so um, obviously mud, water, all the grime all that sort of stuff can get onto them fairly easy and you can start chewing out alternators um, if, especially if you start doing some outback the tracks. The handbrake what a stupid bloody idea they've got with the patrols putting it as a foot brake, honestly. It just doesn't get used. And if you ever do use it, if you get to take it off and you drive, you know, a little bit with it on, it wears out anyway, so. Break. As they were saying on the Y62s, apparently. Uh, generally, the first time you pull the handbrake on, one of those things, that is the last time it works until Toyota retention it again at the next In service. the beginning, it was hard to get mods for the Y62. Now you can get pretty much anything you want. Except the GVM upgrade, you can't get that off the shelf and even if you do get it engineered you can only get it taken up to the um, axle group mass which is only an extra 180 kilos. We're working on it but at the moment you can't get a decent off the shelf GVM upgrade. Uh, um, tow capacity. You can get a GVM upgrade on these things, you can get them up to um, I think 3.8 or 4.2 I think they do now as well. The Saharas, because of all the technology that they've got on board, they're right up there in the weight. So pretty much, you put a full carload of people, a full tank of fuel, you're over your GVM. You put stuff on the roof, a boat or whatever, 200s, I believe you can put 200 kilos on the roof, Y62 or Nissan says you can only put 100 kgs on the roof, probably more, but anyway, um, if you want to be legal, that that nav, is a consideration. The first thing you need to do with the sat nav when you buy one of these things, whether it be a brand new one or a 2008 one or in between, top of the range, base model, all you do, take the dash apart, unscrew the sat nav, take it out, throw it in the bin. Getting drawers. The, with the third row seats, it doesn't fold flat. So there's always a slope, so you gotta, if you make your own, you gotta do this silly little thing to get them flat. All the fridge slides down all the time, and uh, so, yeah, it doesn't fold flat in the back. Annoying, you can get over it. <sighs> Friggin' Toyota engineers are stupid, to say the least. They put it in the middle of the V, so if the starter motor fails, you've gotta take the entire block off and everything to get into it to change the starter motor. The starter motor is not that expensive, it's the cost of getting to it that costs you a fortune. Wheel alignment issues, you know, being um, independent suspension all the way around, great on road, um, maybe a centimetre less travel probably when you're off-road, I haven't really had an issue with that, but you get wheel alignment issues. If you lift them, um, it sucks them in at the bottom and you go to the maximum adjustment on your wheel alignment, you can get 
bushes to fix that. But I find just with loading my car from the weekend to during the week, um, I'm having tire wear because you can never get the wheel alignment balance just right to get good tire wear and to get them sitting right. So I think, you know, if you lift these things, they're gonna chew tires. It's the way it is. Um, interior, it's basic. For the cost of the car, I've only got the GXL. Um, they're fairly basic in the Saharas and VXs. You get that really crappy wood, get, wood grain. I don't like it. Sorry if anyone who does. The interior is just super basic. There's not a lot to them in the sense of technology. -wise. The bloody front windows, especially on the STL Series 1, uh, the actuator just doesn't want to put the window up. Uh, very annoying. You can reset them. I think really the solution is to get that fixed under warranty. Um, I didn't, so I just deal with it. So, but yeah, that's an annoying thing. Maybe if you're buying one secondhand, check that the windows go up and down the way they should. The price. They're expensive. They're overpriced for what they are. There you go. A 200 owner that says these things are overpriced. But I still bought one. I don't know why. Actually, I know why, because I like them. Um, I think that's mostly about it. So as I said, I've probably missed a couple of things. I've tried to be comprehensive with it. Um, if you've got any other ones, chuck it in the comments below. There's always going to be more things that go wrong with these things. Um, I, having said all that, I still like it. I love it. I wouldn't buy anything else. I did test drive the Y62. I liked it, but I couldn't get my head around the fact that it was petrol. I've had diesel since I was 18 years old. I, I think I'm kind of brainwashed. I just wanted the diesel. And these things look heaps better. I've got to say. Sorry, Dave. Look at that ass. That's a nice ass. Anyway, um, just wanted to thank everyone for watching as well. Me and Dave are hoping to do a few more of these things over time. I've got the next topic for, the, for mine. We'll, let, we'll uh, come up with that and try and get that out in the next few weeks for you. Uh, like and subscribe. We're, try, we're just trying to get these content out here for you guys. So if you like it, great. Um, hit the little bell up the top uh, right hand corner as well. That'll give you notifications for the videos as they come out. Uh, go, go visit the, the YouTube uh, Facebook page as well, Australian 4x4 Adventures and Virginia uh, Y62 for uh, for Dave's. Thanks for watching guys. Um, thumbs up for the video if you liked it. Now I hope I haven't put you off buying one of these cars, either 200 series or uh, a patrol. They're both fantastic cars uh, and all cars have bugs, it's just the way it is. This video is trying to take the egos to the side. Trust me, I've got ego for other videos that'll come up later, but just wanted to communicate to you guys some of the things that can go wrong they're not perfect they're bloody amazing but they're not perfect and either vehicle and um, hopefully this helps you understand the card before you buy one cheers thanks for watching yeah yeah